I'm going to use Bill and Trish as my first illustration, pastors Bill and Trish. I looked at Bill and I said, you know, who would have thought we would be pastors because Bill and I and Trish and Judy Joe were all missionaries together in Barcelona together for over a year. Um, I don't remember what the phone call was like when I called you that day. What did I say to you on the phone when I called you from Barcelona that day? I said, hey, Bill, you want to move to Barcelona? <laughs> Is that what I said to you? All right, Bill moved to Barcelona. Little did he know that they would become the directors of that Bible college. And they built a work that changed Spain and still changes Spain today. Amen. So aren't you thankful for people like that? But, you know, what brought the fruit? This is my first scripture for the day, John 12. And you will, it's hard to meet people like this. When you get around them, you learn from them. They're wise, they're smart, they're wise, they're loving, they're caring. Some of the best people in the world right there. So if you get a chance to shake their hand and get to know them, do it. Amen? If you get a chance to bless their kids, bless their kids. Their kids are here at the church. I'm glad to have those kids here at church. It means a lot to have them here. Amen? 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Then I'm going to hit John 12, 24 in the Passion Translation. For all of those who love the Passion Translation, say hallelujah. Love is large. Well, I think love is as large as God is, and He has no limit, so love is limitless. Is that not correct? Incredibly patient. Not just patient, my friend. You and me, sometimes we can run out of patience. Yeah, You ever heard somebody say, you're getting on my last nerve? God doesn't have a last nerve. Love is gentle. Listen to this. Love is gentle. I, I told you last week, never mistake a man's gentleness and kindness for weakness. It is actually strength covered in the love of God. Mm. Mm, I might get excited and preach on that a minute. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. Not just when you feel good. You know, we all like to talk about walking by faith. But when you don't feel like being patient, it takes faith to be patient. When you don't feel like loving people when they're mean to you, you just smile and say, well, I just love you. One of my army buddies this week, I talked to two of them. You know, of course, I'm not going to get into all that. The Lord told me not to talk about politics in the pulpit. You say, why? Because he loves the Republicans. And if I love the Republicans and not the Democrats, then I'm not being like him. Does that mean I agree with everything? No. But it means that I want to be more like God. And what's God? He loves the Democrats and the Republicans. If I only love the Rep Democrats, then I've got to leave some Republicans out. So, you know, people wonder, and people have judged me for not talking about politics. Pastor, you've got to talk. No, I don't have to talk about anything but what God tells me to talk about in this church. And there are reasons. Let me say this. You have to decide what causes you live for. Some causes will alter the course of your history if you give yourself to the wrong cause that you weren't built for. It can change you. We give ourselves to the divine calling, like Paul. Paul said, I was not. He was talking to a king one day. He said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Some people, now listen, your divine destiny and calling is called to be part of some cause somewhere, hooked up with some plan somewhere. It may be here, it may be somewhere else. But the key is finding your place. I was in the military, I was in a squad, I had my job. Everybody had their job. When everybody in my platoon did their job, you know, you know what I'm saying? Everybody had something to do. Everybody in this church, if you're called here, you have something to impart. You're important, you're significant, and God sometimes will have you and I work with people you not, might necessarily get along with all the time. But you know what? The love of God makes allowances because you're not always perfect either. Ha, ha, ha. Okay? John 12, 24. This is what Bill and Trish did when they came to Spain and they gave up their family. After we lived in Barcelona for a year, we turned over the work to these amazing people, and then we moved to Bangkok, Thailand at the word of the Lord. Amen? Now, let me say this. In John 12, 24, we're talking about a revolution of kindness. A revolution of kindness can change everything in your life. There's somebody here, and you say, I just there's a situation in my life I just don't have much hope for. Well, God's love can change anything. I will go as far to say this, and you just have to think about it deeply because you've got to go deep to get this. I don't mean it bad, but kindness is more powerful than faith. Why? Because God is not faith. He's a faith God, but God is love, and love is kind. So if you look at the whole power scheme, well, God is love. And when you preach a message through kindness, you don't even have to open your mouth. But when you're kind to people, it breaks through a hard heart unlike any message ever could. 
There is something about the love of God, something about the kindness of God and the way you speak to people, the way you treat people, the way you look at people, the way you help people make it in life and help them become a success on your shoulders. Yes, I'm a preacher. I'm not here to be more successful than you. My job is to make you successful. So you can't be part of five causes. Some of you need to drink this cup and never forget what I'm about to say because there's a couple of people here, your life is going to be on the rocks if you don't choose the right cause. Well, i gotta, I got I to fight for this. Well, did you ask the Lord if you're supposed to fight for that cause? You cannot give yourself to 5,000 things. You have to focus your life. Your life is about focus. Focus. Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem. He passed by Samaria. His eyes were set on Jerusalem. And they got mad at him. Why? Because his focus was set on the cross. What is your focus set on? Let me make this clear. Jesus said that. A single grain of wheat. What's that? A seed? That, That oak tree. One of my favorite oak trees is that oak tree. I come from a place where there's lots of big trees. I love pine trees. I love big oak, white oaks and pin oaks. I love trees, right? And and when I look at that oak tree, it came from a seed. There was a day when that oak tree was two feet high. Your life is like a seed, but that seed must die to what it wants, the causes it wants to stand for. I'm talking to some of you by the Spirit today. The Lord says if you do not change the causes that you are living for, that some of you will end up shipwrecked. Shipwreck. <laughs> Better say that right. Praise your Lord. Help my mouth to say it right, Lord. That came out sideways. There was an accident. A single grain of wheat now. Okay, yeah. We'll never bear more than a single grain of wheat unless it drops to the ground and dies. And nobody can hear me now, right? Because it sprouts and produces a harvest of wheat because one grain of wheat died. The whole field. I come from a background of farmers. My favorite crop is boiled peanuts. Sorry about that. I love boiled peanuts. And they grow from the ground and you, you, know, you, you make peanut butter out of them and all kinds of nutty things. You know what I'm saying? But my favorite thing and way to eat peanuts, man, if you've never had them, you haven't even lived half your life, man, boiled peanuts. Come on. Anybody ever had boiled peanuts and really like them? I love you more today than did yesterday. All right. Because, listen, Smith Wigglesworth said this. He said this, and it really hit me. I was reading some of his book last week. I have a real thick book of his, and every now and then I'll just ch- drop in. <laughs> Say hello to Smith, you know? Read a, read a page or two and just slow, read slow. Slow, read it meditatively, right? And I was reading it, and you know what he said? Hey, man, good to see you, man. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, Michael, good to see you. So I was reading it slow, and this jumped out at me. How do you know when a seed is dead? Because it produces fruit. No fruit, there has been no death. No fruit, there's been no sacrifice. What they built in Spain, we laid the foundation they built. But what they built was because of sacrifice. When we sacrifice something for people, it always comes back on us in blessings. Amen? We truly begin to live when we give ourselves to a cause greater than ourselves. The causes that you will live for cannot be thousands, but must be that which God laser beams you to. Amen? God will give you divine connections, but it is your choice whether you will accept those divine connections. Who are you talking to, Pastor? I don't know. I don't have anybody in mind. Except I say that out of my heart today. Amen? We truly begin to live when we give ourselves to a cause that's greater than ourselves. Love is on purpose. In love, we find our true purpose. I'm going to say that again. Oh, I preach so much different than I used to, Bill, don't I? My gosh, if you'd have known me when me and Bill were together, I would be swinging from the lights. I was an evangelist, man. I was crazy. I'd be jumping up there in the top. Yeah, you'd be running out of here or something, but now I'm calm, kind of calm these days. Love is on purpose. In love, we find our purpose. In love, we find our God-given destiny. Be kind on purpose, not just randomly. I love random acts of kindness, that phrase. You know why I wrote this sermon? You say, did you read that book? No, I hadn't read any man's book. This came to me from the Lord in the last few weeks, and it has revolutionized my life. 
If you will accept the message on kindness that I'm preaching, it can bring a revolution to your home. How many of you want a revolution at home? Well, my sister don't do the dishes. Well, why don't you do them for a week or two and just tell her you love her? Why don't you show God's love? Well, she never does the dishes, and she always complains, and she always says that she did them, and she didn't do them, and mom and dad don't know. They don't keep up with it, you know, and so, uh, well, why don't you do the dishes for a month then? Well, I don't want to. I tell you what, when you move in kindness in your home, it changes the atmosphere of your home, the way you treat your, your wife, your kids, the way you treat your, ki- your, your, your husband. Amen? I'm always treated so good. You know, at my house, but with such love and dignity and respect. When you treat people with love, dignity, and respect, they respond. Kindness eventually demands a response. And it will come if you're patient. And it will be bigger, greater, stronger than anything you can imagine because it is the love of God and God is love. And love never fails. You hear me? Love never fails. We need to understand the power of kindness. You're preaching it because it's a sermon? No, I'm preaching it because it became a revelation to me. I'm preaching this out of my heart. I'm preaching this because if you get this, it will bring a revolution. At home, what if you tweaked the way you act at home? Tweak it. You know what? Not tweak. Tweak, tweak, tweak. Tweak! Whatever that means. What's that mean, Tom? I don't know, tweak. It means adjust it a little like the knob on a tuning box on on the radio. You adjust it one degree and it sounds so different. You can still hear the fuzzy. How many of you just tune it like one degree off? It's like you got your favorite song going, but it's a little fuzzy and you're like, you just don't love it, right? It'd be like the Georgia Bulldogs with no receivers playing Clemson coming up soon. Be terrible, right? Sorry, I had to throw that in. You may not understand, but if you're around here, you'd understand our little football jokes. Be kind on purpose because kindness brings purpose. We preach the gospel, but have we lived the gospel? When we preach the gospel and live the gospel, especially as ministers, the way we treat our staff. I said the way you treat your staff counts. The way you treat your employees matters. I don't talk down to any of my staff. From the lowest to the highest, I respect every one of them. The more respect you give to people who seem to be in common places and positions is the more honor God will show you back. If you spout off to the police when they pull you over, guess what? That ain't good. Well, I, don't, I might not like that with that certain person, that, that one. Authority. Respect authority and you will be respected. Do not respect authority and you will not be respected. Honor and kindness go further than yelling, screaming, burning, and killing. Kindness will change the world. Destruction and death, we've seen plenty of that. We've seen plenty of destruction. We've seen plenty of riots. We've seen plenty of people beaten in the streets. Is that changing anything? No. But the church in this country can change everything if we will just love people. Well, I'm going to give my opinion. Well, what if you're not supposed to give your opinion, darling? Just shut up and sit down sometimes. That's the love of God. Just means shut up and sit down and bite your tongue when you want to say something because I'm mad. Well, get scratch your glad spot and be kind because it can start a revolution. Two of my army buddies I talked to this weekend. One of them was a six degree black belt. He was he was the toughest guy in the company. Me and him, he's serving God now. The other one, I'm not gonna give names. But he sent me a very explicit text this weekend. So explicit, some of my staff saw it. It's at the bottom of the bottom of text that you would ever send anybody. But you know what? You know what I sent him back? I said, I just want you to know I'm going to keep praying for you, your friend. We give up too easy on people. Something goes sideways and we just throw it out, a relationship. But what about when you went sideways with Jesus and he kept you around? Hmm? How many times have you not done what the Lord put in your heart and yet He just is always there, merciful and kind. May we be merciful as He is merciful. Blessed are the merciful. Why? Because they shall receive mercy. You will mess up in the future. Don't you say that about me. I'm never, I'm never gonna mess. Yeah, you're going to mess up, you big haughty fella. You're going to mess up at one point in life. 
Mark it. I'm 54, okay? You're going to mess up at some point. And when you do, you're going to need mercy. And if you've given it, you shall receive it. How many of you want mercy instead of judgment? <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll get along here in a minute into the sermon. Just kidding. Define kindness. Oh, I love this. I love this. I just, I just love this. Listen to this. Oh, man, I just love this. Are you ready? Let me say it again. Oh, I just love this. You ready? Kindness is like a rainbow of a, of a thousand colors, colors you've not even seen. Now write that down. Kindness is like a rainbow of a thousand colors. I'm going to give you a bunch of words to describe kindness. And what I'm doing is that you're like a sponge today. I want you to soak these words in because this is who you are because the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. This is who you are because God lives inside of you. And greater is He, the love in you, than the hate that's in the world. We will not change this world by destruction and destroying things. We will not change this world by just speaking our mind. We will change this world through the kindness of God. Amen? Ready for this? Let it soak in your sponge. Amen? Beneficent. Kind, to be kind means to be beneficent, compassionate, benevolent, good-hearted, soft-hearted, kind-hearted, sympathetic, tender-hearted, warm-hearted, attentive, considerate, thoughtful, friendly, gentle, good, good-natured and tempered, gracious, mild, neighborly, nice, pleasant, sweet, warm. <laughs> I love those. Nice, pleasant, sweet, and warm. I mean, come on, that's kindness. Lenient, merciful, soft, patient, pitying, tolerant, understanding, generous. Part of kindness is generous. Got an urgent call from the Philippines this week. We're sending them relief because that's who we are. Some of our boys need help. Some of our students from the first 2000. So we're going to help them as a church. Amen. We're going to send relief to them because that's who we are. Is there enough to go around? You bet you watch every missionary that comes to this church. We're going to support them. I don't care if there's a thousand missionaries end up come to this church. If you come to me and you tell me you're a missionary, you're going to walk out with something. <laughs> Might give you Boomer, my dog. Just kidding. <laughs> See, I want Boomer. I love Boomer. No, you can't have Boomer. Just kidding. Listen to this. Generous, humanitarian, and I'm so excited in the future. We, we will be going to two services here within a few weeks. Watch the announcements. It'll be a 9 o'clock and a 10.30. The 9 o'clock service will be one hour long. We'll have different people preaching that service. It's not going to be Judy, Joe, and I, the whole thing. This whole thing's not going to be wrapped around Judy, Joe, and I. If you want a church like that, you go somewhere else. We are a team here. There are men and women in this church already right now that can preach better than I can. And you know what? That first service, we're going to be using our staff to preach. And you're going to hear some incredible messages, right? Who knows? You might be up there. Just kidding. Well, you might. You never know what I'm going to do, right? And then the 1030 service will be as normal, all right? So open-hearted. Are you open-hearted? That's what kind is. Are you selfless? <clears throat> unselfish and cruelty-free. You know how the whole thing goes, you know, when you, you know, they raise pigs now, our chickens. These pigs have been raised cruelty-free. These cows are grass-fed cruelty. We never beat them. When I'm, my, 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 best, my best friend, a bull chased him and rammed his truck one time. Uh, so he did not put the bull down, but the bull was cruel to him. So but he was still nice to that bull. Go kind. You ever heard anybody say, Go pro? I know that's an old thing way back probably, but I'm telling you, go kind, man. Be nice to people. Does it take that much more energy to say thank you? Does it take that much more energy to put a little sweetness on your words? Are there times where you've got to shoot straight? Oh, yeah. Right? You've got to shoot straight sometimes. Remember Aurelio in Spain? We had to shoot straight with Aurelio in Spain in 1996. We had a student that never brushed his teeth, and I had to have a talk with him because it was not kindness when he walked in the room. And it was like, Aah! I said, Bill, you got to talk to Aurelio. He never brushes his teeth. So Bill pulls Aurelio in the office. I loved Aurelio. I still do to this day. Great man. And, I, and he said, now, Aurelio, you got to brush your teeth. And Aurelio says, huh? I use mouthwash. Why do I need to brush my teeth? Huh? Anyway, it's just a funny, fun thing we had as a joke between us. So if you get something out of that, take it home with you. Amen? So what's the opposite of kindness? If you want to look at the... Have you ever met anybody that was just spiteful about everything? 
does it show a good witness? When a husband acts out in front of everybody and destroys his wife in front of a group of people, that's not godly. Is it? Malicious? What is the opposite of kindness? Malicious. You ever met anybody malicious? Not delicious, malicious. Mean, spiteful, unhelpful, not a servant's heart. And everyone owes me attitude. It's not about what you take in this life. It's about what you give in this life. Get the take attitude out of you because the heart of God is God so loved the world. He gave, amen? The heart of God is I love the world so much I gave myself as a seed that produced many trees. And when you give your life and don't do what you want to do, but what He wants you to do, guess what? You're creating a tree that's going to bear much fruit. Everybody say hallelujah. Not attentive. You ever been around somebody who was not attentive, not caring, not polite, not mannerly? That's what mean is. I mean, that's what the opposite of kindness is, a rude person. You don't have to be rude. Does it hurt you to say thank you? Does it hurt you to say, I appreciate you? Because every word out of your mouth causes emotions in people. And if I can build people up with a statement, every time I get around people in this church, I am looking for ways to build you up. I am working on a way to build you up. Because when you walk in this church... I'm looking for something to say to, to make you walk out of here higher because you're champions, you're winners, you're overcomers. But we have to marry the kindness and love of God with faith in our heart. We cannot just preach a message of faith and a message of the Christ without living for the Christ or living how the Christ would live through us. Let the Christ live kindly through you. It never helps to be grouchy ever. All right? So listen, real quick, home. So what are you going to do at home? Brothers and sisters sometimes fight. <laughs> My kids really don't fight a lot. I mean, I don't know. I just got the best kids in the world. They just don't fight a lot. But I hear a lot of stories, war stories, right? I was the only child, so I never saw fighting. I was the only dude, you know, just one dude, and that's it. My mom lost several babies, but where was that? Ah, who's listening? Just kidding, honey. I said, just go. <laughs> where are you? Where am I? Yeah, home. So what are you going to do at home? Husband comes in a little grouchy, so are you going to meet it with grouchy? Meet it with kind and watch how God turns the situation. Wife comes home grouchy. What are you going to do? Husband sits in front of the TV and screams at everybody all the time. What are you going to do? Bring him some food and say, honey, what are we watching tonight? See, we want what we want. But Paul said, put other people's interests ahead of your own. When you do that, it's like heaping coals of fire on their head. And I'm talking holy, holy ghost fire, you know what I mean? Good fire, like, wow, somebody does care about me. You know the guy that said what he said to me this weekend, an army buddy, 20, 30 years ago, 1986 to 89, we were in together. My comeback to him did something. He says, you know what, no matter how bad I treat, he lost his wife, he lost his family. No matter how bad I treat people, Russ still cares about me. Why? Because doesn't Jesus still care about him? He was the guy who used to polish his boots. The one that I talked to yesterday, or Greg, I can say Greg's name, but the one I talked to who was the six belt degree black belt, he, uh, he's going to church. He's serving Jesus. And when I was preaching to him in the army, I just preached to Greg all the time. He'd say, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to kick your... I'm like, I can't say that in church, you know. And I told him yesterday, I said, you remember what you told me when we were together, but I wasn't scared of anybody. I, I'm not trying to brag, but I literally was not scared of anybody. I'd go up to the toughest guys and preach to them. And old Greg, like, if you keep preaching to me, I'm going to put you down. I am going to kick your... You know what? Except he didn't say, you know what? You know what? I kept preaching. You know what? He's serving God today. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on. And the other one will as well. I'm going to keep praying for him. How you act in your home is the real you, my friend. I don't let down at my house in a way to where I'm not going to be kind. Yeah, I relax at home. But when I'm home, I, if I don't treat my family with at least the same respect and love and dignity and kindness I treat the church members, then I'm living a double life. 
I'm a hypocrite. Did you say that, Pastor? Did you call me a hypocrite? No, I didn't call you a hypocrite, but what does the Word call you? What does the Word call you? A hypocrite who says one thing but does something else. So the way you treat your family at home and the way you act when you're at work or around other people should not be different. We should walk the same consistently in this life because it's a discipline walking in the love of God. And I'm telling you what, I'm watching a revolution before my eyes right now. Do you throw things? My mom used to throw things. Do you yell a lot? My mom yelled all the time. Do you blame everyone else for your problems? All those problems are usually a result of bad attitude. One bad attitude produces another bad attitude, right? When you really don't feel good, walk by faith and be kind and watch the power of kindness change things. It is faith when you walk in love when you don't feel like it. Faith is not moved by feelings. Do not be flippant with your attitude and words. Be deliberate and calculated with kindness. And I'm going to say that again because it's very important for all of us that when we walk out of our house, ha- if you don't do it at home, that's the best place to practice. But if you don't master it and learn at home, then how are you going to do it at work? How are you going to do it on the, in the rest of the world? Or else we're living a double life. Is that right? Let's talk a minute about the psychology. Say psychology. Yeah, because there's something interesting here that I really studied that's really kind of wild. It says, let's talk a minute about psychology behind people being mean. All right? People are mean to others in order to feel better about themselves many times. It's called the ego threat. Some of you who have studied this know. I've studied human psychology only from the standpoint of learning more so I can help more people. It is someone's threatened. What is the ego threat? Everybody say ego. Not ego. Ego. What is the ego threat? I mean the ego threat. (laughs) Don't eat too many of those things because they are good, boy. A little butter. It is, now listen, what's the ego threat? It is someone's threatened self-esteem that drives a lot of aggression. In other words, it doesn't really matter if people feel good or bad about themselves in general. What matters is that people in the moment feel worse about themselves than usual. In other words, the person putting them down puts the person down because if they make the other person feel lower, then they feel higher. It's called the ego threat. Another way to bring this out is to say, if I damage or hurt your self-esteem by my harsh words, then my self-esteem and ego are going to maintain their domination over you. Therefore, I am better than you. But remember what we read when we were dedicating little Josiah, Matthew 19, 13. They brought the little children to Jesus. And what did Jesus say? He said, allow the little children to come unto me. Jesus thinks different than we do. He says, if we don't receive the kingdom as a little child, we will not enter it. Isn't a little child kind? Mostly, unless they're taught bad. Usually little kids are so sweet and kind. There's an innocence. Amen. God, we can maintain a pure heart in this life. But if we let it get all jacked up from hate and bitterness, we're only destroying. Or the lot we got in life. Why did we get this lot? Why did I get this lot? Why did you get this lot? It's all how you bake the cake. After you have those ingredients, my friend, how are you going to bake the cake? Well, I've got a problem with this in my family. Well, how are you looking at it? If you look at it negatively, negatively, why don't you start looking at that spot that seems to be a weak spot in your family as something amazing, something special, something powerful that helps you rise up to a higher level? <laughs> Come on now, I'm talking to somebody. Amen, brother? Amen, everybody? If I say, look at you, say, brother, doesn't mean I'm talking to you, all right? I'm talking to everybody. Jesus said, let the little children come. Nobody wanted to help the kids, but Jesus did. Be deliberate deliberate and on purpose with your kindness. Make a conscious decision to locate people and bless them with the most powerful thing in the world. You can reach people through kindness alone, I'm convinced. I mean, I don't have to preach to them. Listen to this. We can create a kindness culture that changes the world right from this church. You can do it. This is not just some other message I got from some other preacher. This is something that God gave me. This is something that's changed my own life. And I've always been, you know, a pretty compassionate guy. But I'm telling you what, God has worked a number on me studying this. And if it doesn't start at the top with the ministers, then if the ministers are treating people bad, then my goodness, it just trickles on down the line, doesn't it? Be kind and bring a revolution at home. Bring it at work. You got an employee at work. Let's say you got somebody at the work that just 
gets on all your last nerves, not just one last nerve. Why don't, you, why don't you buy them lunch? Why don't you buy them lunch a few times? Why don't you do something nice for them, clean their desk? I'd say polish their shoes, but we just don't do that unless we're in the Army, right? Do something nice. Like a friend of mine said, he got massages for all his people while they were at work. I'll take that. Praise God. You can send that person over here to this workplace as well, and we'll, we'll receive that kindness in Jesus' name. Amen? Kindness begets kindness. Kindness produces more kindness. So you can see how the snowball effect begins. If you won't give up, if you won't quit at work on that person who gets on those all your last nerves, and you start reaching out to them, guess what? You can reach them by living the message, and they're going to come to you and say, will you tell me more about God? Because the way you treat me is not how everybody else does. Now, isn't that the way it's supposed to be? Somebody give me a good amen here in this church. Amen? Matthew seven twelve. Come on up, sweetheart, baby. Here she comes, just a walking down the street. No, I'm just kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. She is pretty. She looks good. She sounds good. All right. I have to say that because that's my angel. This is my angel. Listen to this. How you treat people is who you really are. I love these guys because I've never seen them treat anybody bad. How you treat people when you don't feel good. When you're having a bad day, more or less. How do you talk to your sister or your brother? Buck up and be kind, baby. Come on. Go pro. I mean, go kind. Matthew seven twelve, Closing here. In everything you do, be careful to treat others in the same way you'd want them to treat you. What does that sound like? That's love. What do we call this verse? Somebody help me out. What do we call this verse? Do unto others as you would have them do to you. What do we call this? The golden rule. Wait a minute. The golden rule. Jesus said if you'll love God first. What do you say? If you'll love God first, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and state, strength, and love your neighbor as yourself fulfills all the law and the prophets. Why is that? Because it is a full gospel without a word. But they will hear the gospel because they're going to come to you and say, will you please tell me? When that mother is mad at you because you did something and you didn't mean to and, and she's all over you and you're just loving on her in the middle of her screaming, yelling, that she calls back and says, you know, I'm sorry, but you acted like a Christian. What if you'd have showed out when they were yelling at you? What if you'd have showed out like a <clears throat> maybe a non-Christian? <laughs> Are you preaching the gospel through your actions? Oh, come on now, smile at me. Y'all are looking too serious today. Come on, somebody smile at me. Kindness is the expression of a loving and caring God. Kindness to me is our most powerful weapon. Where the preaching may fail, kindness can break through to the hardest hearts. People need to hear you preach kindness through your actions. You can cause a revolution at home, at work, and school. Make it your lifestyle you'll bow your head just a moment if you're here today and you don't know Jesus I would like to give you an opportunity to pray with me if you're here or listening online I would like to ask the church to pray out loud with me as a family for those and with those people who have never received Christ let's pray this together Jesus I believe you're the son of God I believe you rose from the dead Right now, come in my heart and give me eternal life. I believe in you, Jesus. Show me the plan you have for my life. For my life. Amen. Well, we're wrapping this series up today, putting a bow on it. Haven't you enjoyed it? I was thinking about all of us, and I was thinking about this church, and we're such... We're so blessed as pastors. We have such a church full of leaders. And what we are is the kind leading the kind. Amen? That's what we are. That's what we want to be. We want to go forth as the kind leading the kind. Whether that's in your home as a husband or a mother or as a teacher, where you work or whatever group you're over in the church or, or whatever you do, we want to be the kind leading the kind. 
Amen. And I was just thinking about how many times we see Jesus be so kind. I was thinking about Luke 24, one of my favorites, the road to Emmaus. And all that was because he chose to be kind and to go up to two guys who were struggling, two disciples struggling. And did he have to walk with them? And did he have to talk with them? Or could he just went on his way? Did he have to go into their house and eat with them? He did not. How about John 4 with um, the Samaritan woman? We talk so much about that story. And it was all because... He went to a people group and sat with her, and they didn't do that, right? A Jew didn't sit with a Samaritan, but he chose to be kind. And I was thinking about Matthew 14. I find it extraordinary because Jesus and his disciples had been thronged. They'd been in the crowds of people, and he sent his disciples to the other side, and he went and he sent the crowds away. He could have demanded that they do that. He was Jesus. I'm getting in the boat. I'm done. I've ministered. I'm done. That's not who he was. He was the kind leading the kind. Amen? And so I was just thinking about that, and I was thinking about that's who we are, and, and wondering what it is that blocks that sometimes, us being kind. And I think as you go on in life, someone pointed out we were at the farmer's market on Saturday, and someone pointed out, aren't little kids just always so sweet and cute? Yeah, because the world hadn't tainted them yet. They hadn't come up against all the unkindness that's coming their way, and they hadn't had to guard their hearts so much that they became someone they didn't like. And I can remember, and some of you know this story, I can remember exactly where I was, and it would have been the year like probably 2009-ish, 7, 2007. <laughs> I said ish. And I can remember exiting 169 onto 71st Street. I literally remember where it was. I remember coming down and stopping my car and thinking, I don't like who I've become. I don't like my heart. I don't like that I've let the unkind acts of others affect who I really am. And I chose to change. I chose to forgive and let it go and find me again. And I'm sharing that story because I believe there's someone, at least one in here, and you find yourself in the pl same place today. Whatever it is that's been done to you, unkind experiences that you've had in your life have made you not even like who you are anymore. And you can remember when you were one way and think you can never go back. I can testify you can. Amen. And so I don't know who that is, but I can tell you it starts with forgiveness. You forgive others that have done what they've done to you and you forgive yourself for allowing these things to harden you to a place you don't even like you. And so we're going to pray right now. I'm not going to call you out. God knows your heart. But Father, right now, I just pray for that one or however many might be or for those watching online, Father, right now, that their heart has become hardened because of what they have been through. And Father, I thank you. You sent us the precious Holy Spirit, and one of his jobs is to counsel us and to quicken us and to show us the way. And so I pray right now for the counsel of the Holy Spirit that would comfort and guide and point out and shine a light on these spots that we don't want to be who we are. And right now, Father, we choose forgiveness. We forgive Listen, we release and we let go. Words spoken against us, acts done to us. We choose to free and let go right now in Jesus' name that we might be the very image of Christ in the earth today. Father, we choose that our eyes are focused upon you. Just as the Lord Jesus focused upon the cross and forward he went, so do we. No matter what happens to us, we choose today to guard our our heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life in Jesus name amen amen and I was just vulnerable with you and sharing a moment I had so that you could relate and, and not feel like the only one but I'm telling you you can have change in your life today amen I'm gonna call Mariah on up